Movies about war generally aren't warm-hearted affairs, and Casualties of War is certainly a difficult, brooding, affecting watch. It's one of numerous movies portraying what might have once been idealistic, patriotic soldiers who turn into mentally damaged monsters during the Vietnam War. They are casualties of war in a sense of their own, becoming dead inside, losing their sane moral consciousness, just how innocent people, particularly one young village girl, suffer and lose their lives and livelihoods at their hands all over a highly questionable, hellish war. Hey, this is Jan Mann, and this is a look back at 1989's Casualties of War, directed by Brian De Palma. Casualties of War is based upon a 1969 article, which later became a book that director Brian De Palma read in The New Yorker, detailing an actual 1966 incident of a squad of American soldiers who kidnapped a young village girl while on reconnaissance, then proceeded to abuse, assault, and ultimately kill her. Though one of the soldiers refused to take part in the continuous harm against her, and eventually reported the soldiers, despite their threats of retaliation, and brought them to trial, with each getting prison time, albeit reduced ones. Given this subject matter, Casualties of War is a tough watch. It's shown from the beginning what kind of war-torn hell the soldiers are going through, and by this point, they largely already see the Vietnamese, even those who are innocent and not aligned with the Viet Cong, as below them and even expendable, including women and children. When one of the soldiers is suddenly shot and killed, it's all that is needed for Sergeant Tony Meserve, played by Sean Penn, to fully snap. It is then that he concocts the plan to take a, quote, pretty Vietnamese girl to use for their pleasure and then dispose of, justified by him as a way to stick it to these people and the enemy. Michael J. Fox is Matt Erickson, the one soldier who protests it from the beginning, but feels he can't do anything about it, given he is a fresh private, and to go against orders would be cowardice, treason, or desertion. Therefore, he watches, as do we the audience, while the movie slowly builds towards this woman's inevitable torment and horror at the hands of these soldiers. Sean Penn is incredibly scarily believable at portraying this young soldier who has this mixture of PTSD, rage, mental derangement, and utter heartlessness. All the while, he has this level of charismatic energy, bravado, and intensity, which makes him, his embittered words, and soulless actions equally all the more seductive to his fellow soldiers to go along with, minus, of course, Erickson. Those soldiers, played by recognizable seasoned actors like John Leguizamo and John C. Riley, follow his orders and actions like naive, mindless minions. Leguizamo's character is briefly conflicted at one point, even making a pact with Erickson not to harm the girl, but ends up giving in to the pressure of Meserve and the other soldiers, like a kid in grade school pressured to drink or steal by peers, and does it to fit in, even though fully knowing it's wrong. But as strong as Penn's performance is, it is Chui Lee's that anchors the movie. This is Lee's only credited role, but one wouldn't think she was someone just pulled from obscurity or she herself wasn't a seasoned actor, because the amount of fear, pain, and agony she portrays, mostly through actions, facial expressions, and sobbing, is both outstanding from a performance standpoint and compellingly heartbreaking as she slowly endures and eventually meets her fate in a scene that is as bone-rattling and gut-wrenching as any put to film or screen. However, the movie does climax with this sequence, which is one minor criticism, because when it transitions to Erickson attempting to convince his superiors of the soldier's crime and then their eventual trial, there is some narrative steam that's lost. It's still engaging and interesting, but does not have that same guttural, emotional, climactic punch. The bookend of Erickson seeing a girl who looks similar to and reminds him of the murder girl also does feel a little tacked on, but at the same time purposely serves as a release of sorts for Erickson, as though her spirit is forgiving the guilt he carries over not doing enough to save her. Casualties of War is often overshadowed by other movies regarding the Vietnam War that were released around the same time, such as Born on the Fourth of July, Platoon, or Full Metal Jacket. 
but the movie stands on its own merits and effectiveness. According to De Palma, the movie likely wouldn't have been greenlit and made without Michael J. Fox's then star power coming off Back to the Future and Family Ties fame. And while Fox gives a good performance opposite an even stronger Penn and Lee, it is the underlying haunting loss of young men's minds and morals, men who are barely men at 18, 19, 20, 21 years old, along with the loss of innocent lives taken by them, particularly the pain and agony experienced by the young woman, and how people like Erickson, a good person, can look past the most immoral, ugly, contemptible situations and actions, even if only in the moment, due to fear of being labeled, being fired, or retaliation by the wrongdoers, is what is truly disturbing. A fear to speak up or act that continues daily throughout the world from workers in corporations or government jobs to entertainment or, in this case, military officials. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't do this. I can't do it. You don't understand. Oh, 